Hey. How you doing, Mal? Good, mate. Thanks for joining me. I'm digging the shirt and I'm digging the mug as well. That's uh, that's some good stuff there. I like it. I knew you'd like the T-shirt. I saw that um, live stream you did with uh, Damon Johnson. Ah, uh, yeah, that was good fun, man. It's weird. It was like yep. it was the first time we came out of lockdown. Yeah. Uh, and played in a room, you know, for a long time. Um, but it was good to get out and, and move some air with some uh, amplifiers. You know what I mean? It was great. You looked like you were having fun. <laughs> Of course, great songs. Damon's a sweetheart. You know, he's a great friend of mine. So it was good to get out and do something. No one had done anything for a while at that point. So it was good to, as I said, yeah. get out and move some air, you know. It was a fucking weird time in the world, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And uh, I don't think we've recovered yet, you know. I think there's a, uh, you know what I mean? Not to get into that sort of stuff. But I mean, mm. I don't think, you know, it got weird. And I think, you know, there's a there's a kind of a knock-on effect from that whole period you know what i mean so oh yes yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so it's i know exactly what you mean exactly mm. <laughs> <laughs> now the reason we've got you here is oh yes gonna... that yes that excellent album by the way love it thank you very much Mel. how did this band come about what was the timeline in the whole thing? And, um, yeah, start at the beginning. <laughs> well, it's a long, I mean, I joined Priest in 2011, right? Mm -hmm. So it was 12 years ago, and I joined them on the farewell tour. It was the last world tour. So mm -hmm. I joined them 40 years in on, a, on a, what was billed as the last world tour. So I would have been stupid, really, not to think about what I was going to do after Priest, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Fortunately, 12 years later, Priest is still here, putting out new music, touring the world. The world's a better place for it. But at the time, I didn't think that was going to be the case. I don't think anyone thought that was going to be the case. So no. uh, the, the seed was sown all the way back then. Mm. Um, you know, but as I said, subsequently, you know, Priest carried on. Uh, we've released two albums. We almost finished the third one. Uh, we've been touring since then. So that became my band, you know, and fantastic. You know, it changed my life and continues to every day. So, you know, and but when we hit the pandemic, no one was doing anything. You know, the lockdowns mm. hit us. And no, as we just spoke about, uh, no one was doing anything. No one was playing live. No one was touring. So I had a, uh, a little bit of time to consolidate some ideas that I've been working on for the, a couple of years prior um and see what i had really you know did i have an ep did i have an album did i have a band you know what what did i have and uh, that's what i did so i put some ideas together uh, and it was important to me really for it to have its own sonic character you know outside of priest i think um and it was important to be heavy metal about it you know as as your uh, as your <laughs> mug states no, but, uh, i was just i was just straightening it up there yeah, yeah of course um <laughs> I think if I if it was something that sounded like a priest record, it wouldn't have been any point. We that's what we do with priest, and they've been gracious enough uh, to include me on the writing with that. So I wanted it to have its own character. Uh, it shaped up to have its own character, and I went with it. And that's that's the kind of long version. So um, I started putting it together, uh, and it took shape from there. And I called up some friends of mine, got them on on the record, and uh, went from there really. Mm. Now, um, tell us about some of the other guys. You got Ronnie. Um, he seems to bob up in a lot of places. Um, I was just tidying up my um, CD rack the other day, and oh, look what I found here! You know, he's on this one. <laughs> um, he's got an unmistakable sound. How did you run into him? How long have you known him? Well, I ran into Ronnie. I mean, I think, I mean, myself. I was intro introduced to Ronnie when he started playing with Rainbow mm. uh, and Richie Blackmore um, got him into Rainbow. I think that was probably around, I could be wrong. I think that was around 2016, 2017. I could be wrong. But I remember Scott Travis called me from the road in Europe. He was out with, uh, he'd done some dates with Thin Lizzy. Uh, you, you know, and uh, he called me and said, you've got to check out this singer. So that was, it was all the way back then I was introduced to Ronnie's voice. 
Uh, and we met him on the Firepower Tour. We were out in Spain and he was opening up for Priest with his band Lords of Black, I think it was. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, I was aware of Ronnie, knew Ronnie sort of on that level. Um, and you're right, he's got an unmistakable sound. He's got uh, a character that we can kind of uh, identify in terms of where it comes from. You know, those influences in Ronnie's voice, I think we all know it's a classic rock voice, but it's a voice in 2023, which is what this record is. You can hear where those influences come from, I think, on this record. But it's a it's a record in 2023. And I think Ronnie fits that perfectly, you know. So when his voice came up, it was actually Damon Johnson that I was talking to, funny enough, um, <laughs> about who to get as a singer. See how it comes full circle. Yeah, um, does, and, yeah. and Damon actually mentioned uh, Richie Blackmore and uh, and Ronnie and the light bulb went off and it's of course Ronnie Romero and I called Ronnie and we talked and uh, went from there mm. Drums who have we got on drums well on the record we've got uh, the the legend Scott Travis from Judas Priest um, again I mentioned him before um, you know I've always promised Scott that if I ever did anything outside of Judas Priest, I'd give him first refusal, um, you know, and I did. And I was fortunate enough that he was able to do the record. Uh, he wasn't able to be part of the, the touring lineup, but, uh, you know, just having him on the record, super great, great yeah, super grateful, super fortunate uh, to have him on the on the record. Um, and it's the same with the bass, you know, with Rex Brown. I called up Rex Brown uh, from Pantera. Um, and asked him if he could, you know, I've got this record. I need to record any chance of you, um, fulfilling bass duties and he was able to do it. Same thing really though, moving forward, obviously Rex is with Pantera and they're out, mm. you know, touring, touring the world at the moment. So I had to, you know, get in some more guys in the band to move forward with it. But at the time it was about recording the record, finding the best guys I could um, to record the record. And that's what I did. So uh, mm. yeah, it sounds awesome. I mean, and those guys along with Ronnie, they've got a character, and it's unmistakable, you know, when Rex plays bass or when Scott plays drum, you know, you know, it's them. They're legends for for the right reasons. Yeah, yeah. Now, have you taken it out on the road at all yet? We're actually we just arrived in the UK um, yesterday. We've got some rehearsals here, uh, and then we we head out to the continent in Europe. We've got some dates with Pantera, funny enough. And then we head out to the festival, <laughs> this festival season here in, in Europe. Yeah. Um, so we start, our first date is on the 12th. Um, and then we finish up in Wales in the UK on the 30th of July. So we're out, you know, here doing that. So, uh, yeah, we're excited to take the music to the fans and play live. That's what it's about for me, really, you know, connecting with the fans and, you know, evolving and, growing as a band so we're looking forward to it mm. how's the reception been to the album i mean i i fucking love it i thought whoa um you must be getting a lot of that it, it's been really it's been really positive you know it's, uh which i'm grateful for you know you, you it's like anything you can you can give something a thousand percent and then you you let it let it loose on the world and uh it's either poorly received or it's well received and that's all you can ask for really is that people give it a chance and give it their opinion and uh, give it the time of day, really. And it seems to be, as I said, received positively. And that's all you can ask for. And again, you know, the more people listen to it, the more we can take it to countries around the world, play for fans and hopefully snag a few fans as we go along around the world. Mm. Mm. One thing I want to ask is your health. How's your health? You had a bit, a, you had a big scare. I won't say you had a bit of a scare. You had a big scare a um, couple of years back now. How's, um, how are you going? I appreciate you asking. It seems to be going okay. Uh, I think I seem to be doing well, although I seem to be doing well before it all happened. So, <laughs> so I, I don't quite know. But um, no, it, it, you know, I have regular checkups. Uh, there's certain, uh, you know, things I have to keep on top of and whatever. But I seem to be doing okay. The docs, you know, the doctors and the surgeons they uh, they keep on top of it, and uh, I'm okay to do this still. And uh, there's there's challenges that people go through that are a lot a lot bigger than this one you know fortunately i was luckily lucky enough to make it through the actual incident um and people go through mm. stuff every day but I, the stuff that i have to do every day to to maintain what i have to do is is nothing compared to what some people have to do you know mm. Mm. 
if I can just take you back, when you got the call to join Judas Priest, I mean, it's not just any old band, it's Judas Priest, what went through your mind? Oh, I mean, as you said, it's not, I mean, it's, it's Priest, it's, it's, uh, it means so much to so many people around the world. It means so much to music, not only metal, but in music in general, really. You know, the look, the sound, they defined the genre mm. in so many ways. Uh, so it means so much. So all of that goes through your mind uh, when you're considered for that role, you know, and just to be considered was an honour, really, just to be considered for a, a, an audition as such. Uh, so all of that goes through your mind. Um, but I think you've just got to... It's it's uh, an opportunity that doesn't come up every day. Um, I knew I had a shot at that opportunity, and you just got to grab the ball by the horns and give it a thousand percent, and that seemed to be the the way to go, you know. Um, and luckily, I'm still here twelve years later. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, do you ever? Well, you must pinch yourself, like look around on stage, and let that's fucking Judas Priest. You know, you must have that. Well, of course, of course. Um, you know, especially, you know, when you first join a, a situation like that, it's it's unreal. You know, it becomes very real very quickly um, because of the the enormity of the situation. You know, you, you become part of the, the situation pretty quick and, you know, you're touring around and, you know, you, you go to countries around the world and beautiful fans, beautiful countries, fantastic songs. Uh, but you become part of, you know, they've, as I said before, they've been gracious enough to let me be a part of the creative team. Uh, they give me an, an opinion and a, and a voice and everyone's got that. So you become part of it. So uh, every now and then you look around and you have to pinch yourself, but then you get your head back down again. And it's more about, you know, what are we going to do different this time? How are we going to make this album better or this song better or this performance or this production or this set list better you know you you, you get your head down again and you, that's what it becomes about you know but you're right every now and again you do look around and it's like bloody hell this is this is priest of course you have those moments you know but um but yeah it's it's just uh, an education every day on uh, how they've done things for the last more than half a century it's amazing mm. Mm. back to um this album Lights Out, I noticed, made an appearance. How did that come about? Did you want to pick a cover and that was the obvious one? How was that uh, thrown around? Pretty much, really. You hit the nail on the head. There was, there was a couple oh. that I was toying around with uh, to potentially go on the record. Um, I'm a huge UFO fan, huge Michael Schenker fan. Yeah. That one seemed to just have the right dynamic for that part of the record, mm. really. It had the right tempo, the right texture, um it's just seemed to fit at that point of the record and uh you know i think when you do a cover you've got to change it slightly otherwise there's no point but you can't change it too much hmm. that it changes the the soul of the original so you've got you've got to tr you tread a line really you've got to hmm. you've got to change it without changing it too much uh so i, I think we we trod the line in my opinion well, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure people might have had a different opinion of that, but you know it is what it is. Um, so yeah, and ultimately, I just love UFO, love Schenker, and I, I thought it fit the record, and we went with that. Yeah. How much uh, of an influence was Schenker growing up? Was he your oh, primary massive. influence? He's one of he's one of my my top five primary influences. I mean, uh, there's, there's hundreds of guitar players that I would call influences. But um, there's there's probably five that shape the way that I play fundamentally, and he's one of them. He's one of the probably the top two, you know. So uh, so definitely, um, you know, the flying V, the, the you know, it's it's, it's just a uh, Schenker is a masterclass in how to play rock guitar, you know. So he wrote the book, you know, along with a, a couple of other guys um, from that period. Um, on that, you know, melody and note choice and phrasing and songwriting and technique, all that sort of stuff. It's just a masterclass in rock guitar, you know. Hmm. Let's talk about your guitars. What are you playing these days? 
Well, I'm playing. I've I've been a Gibson guy for as long as I can remember, really. Mm. Um, uh, since I started playing live, they were the tools that I found like I needed, uh, gravitated towards. I didn't know why at the time. Um, they just felt right, sounded right. Um, so I go between Flying V's, Les Pauls, uh, and more recently uh, Explorers. Um, so obviously there's the Schenker influence there with the with the V, um, but uh, yeah, we've got a signature uh, signature Gibson. We've got a custom shop V coming out this year, which is uh, the latest evolution of a V that I've been using with Priest for the last twelve years. Um, so yeah, it's it's you know usually it's the tools that suit the job, um, and they evolve over time depending on what that job needs to be you know uh our playing styles change you know all of us um and what we need changes uh in terms of like pickups and what we need to hear what we need to feel de dependent on what how those uh styles change and what our taste how our taste change and stuff so um and the guitar is a representation of those changes you know um, what we want to hear what we want to feel and what we want to project out you know as music so um actually the prototype for the guitar that's coming out is the guitar that i used on this record it's the one guitar that i used on the whole thing mm. um not consciously i didn't set out to do that but it, was, it just turned out that way it was one guitar one amplifier and it, it seemed to check all the boxes sonically so that's what i went with mm. Um, firstly, how is Glenn going? Well, he seems to be, you know, obviously the nature of uh, the disease he has, Parkinson's, uh, he, he has good days and bad days. Mm. So, you know, some days he's, you know, he has good days, some days not so good, you know, but it's, Glenn's a fighter, he's a warrior. Um, and he's been present with us, you know, all the way through the the writing and recording process of the last album we've been working on. And uh, whenever he can, he gets out live mm. and plays with us. Um, so, yeah, he's a warrior and he's an inspiration, really. You know, the stuff he's going through, uh, he still gets up and plays when he can. So, uh, but he has good days and bad days, man. Mm. Right. Festivals. What festivals have we got lined up over there? I mean, here as an Australian, way over here on the other side of the world, we see these festival lineups and we, we say, fuck off you know, with these lineups. Um, it's just insane. Are they something you can take in when you're there or is it too much of a blur? Are you in and out playing to the next one? How is it from the well, inside? It's, been, it's a good question. You know, um, sometimes with Priest, we do fly in and fly out. Um, but where we where we can, we do get, you know, we do get time. If, you know, if we can, we go around. We usually have friends there you know, different bands and stuff that we get around uh, if we can to see and, and check their bands out and stuff like that or new bands that we haven't seen before and we've heard a lot about. So we do, if we can, we do get time and we go around the festival grounds and check out stuff. Um, and especially, you know, Elegant Weapons, we're going to be on earlier in the day. We're going to have different mm. different slots, obviously, than, than Priest would. So uh, we'll probably be there early in the day. We'll get a lot more time to go around and, again, see friends that we know and some bands that we know and some bands that we don't. So there is... There is that dynamic to the festivals, you know, but you're right. We do in, in Europe. I mean, the European festivals are famous for that lineup kind of stuff that you that you suggested. It's just it's it's amazing, really. Um, and it's a yearly a yearly event, really. It's like, yeah. you know, three or four months of the year, which is just packed with great bands, great bills, great festivals. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. It's one. It's a magical time of the year for you know any band to be out. And again, very grateful, very uh, privileged to be uh, playing music, touring around, playing these festivals, and uh, we know how lucky we are, you know. Mm. How do you go living out of a, a suitcase? I mean, it'd be different if you're in the in the bus touring around Europe or, say, the US, but going internationally, fly in, hotel, unpack, maybe, maybe leave the suitcase in the corner with just a lid open, and then you're out again the next day, you know, 4 a.m., lobby call, whatever. How do you go... With that, how have you coped with that over the years? Well, obviously, obviously these situations are different. Um, you know, Priest is um, 
obviously they've been going for a lot longer. It's, it's a bit more of a comfortable situation. Um, but it's, it's, we have, you know, things like a wardrobe, uh, set up where, uh, we, we don't, we don't take our, what we wear on stage to the hotels with us. We have a crew that take care of that. So we, what we really need in the hotel is fairly minimal. You know, you need a toothbrush, a t-shirt and a, you know, a towel. That, that's pretty much it, you know, um, and everything else gets taken care of really. Um, so, I mean, you, you get used to stuff, you know, you, we run things pretty minimally. Um, well, I do anyway. I've got a pretty small case, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not that high maintenance, you know what I mean? I, I don't take that much uh, stuff on the road. I've got some uh, medication, obviously, uh, a couple of, a couple of t-shirts and a uh, toothbrush. That's about it really. We are getting to the end here, man. Can All I right. get you, can I get you to do one thing for me? And let's give us a horns yeah. up in the camera. Excellent. Because it's important to be heavy metal about it. It is important. I hope you get better soon. I hope you get over the flu. <laughs> I'll be right. I've had worse. Best of luck with uh, Elegant Weapons. Uh, best of luck with Priest. You take care of yourself. And, Cheers, mate. You too. And uh, hopefully we'll have another chat sometime. Maybe come on down here again sometime soon. Definitely. It'll be good to see you lot down there. Hopefully we'll get a tour down there and uh, we'll come and see you. Excellent. You take care, man. Cheers, Mel. Take care Cheers, now. Bye-bye now. Bye. See you, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.